So today's session is uh, brought to us by uh, Sanjay Kumar, who is a very well known and experienced uh, telecom engineer. Uh, he has been, um, and when, when I say telecom, I'm not saying particular to one particular uh, technology. His expertise spans uh, a wide range from uh, 2G to 5G, both on the RAN side as well as the core network side. And if I say core network, uh, you know, uh, some of you may be familiar, a lot of things in the core network are moving towards cloud uh, technologies. So in that sense, uh, Sanjay also has a, a vast experience in things like edge computing, orchestration, open RAN, ORAN, uh, and he's also a, a certified AWS trainer. So yeah, telecom is one of those uh, domains which are which is being uh, in influenced uh, by cloud technologies, and uh, Sanjay is uh, a part of that change. And he has trained hundreds, I would even say thousands of engineers across many uh, high level companies. He has trained employees in Cisco, Nokia, Ericsson, Huawei, uh, Reliance Geo, Vodafone, Wipro, Accenture, Saskin, and many more companies. So he is very well known in the industry as a telecom trainer. His total experience in telecom is close to 20 years. Apart from his expertise in telecom, he is also an entrepreneur. For more than a decade, he was uh, a trainer slash director at Nanocell Networks Private Limited. More recently, he's a founder at uh, Learnizo Global, which is again uh, into telecom training. So with that uh, brief introduction, I will now hand over to Sanjay Kumar. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, Arvind. Thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, Arvind, before I get started, I uh, just wanted to understand how much time we have got for this session so that accordingly I can plan my pace. Uh, Uh, Arvind, can you hear me? Hello, Arvind, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, so uh, we have like 45 minutes uh, plus 15 minutes Q&A. Right, great. Yeah. Okay. But we can extend. Uh, we are not, uh, we are flexible. It can also go up to one hour, 10 minutes. No problem. Thanks. Thanks, Arvind. Yeah. Right. Uh, so good morning, everyone. And whether uh, you sorry, whether you want to ask, uh, keep the Q and A at the end, or give a chance in between, that's up to you. Yeah. Uh, so I'm okay, right? So if they want to, because there are a lot. Because whenever we have, uh, you know, many uh, lot of participants, I prefer to have at, uh, at some certain breaks. But now we have only uh, as of now four or five participants. So if we they have any questions in between, feel free yeah. to interrupt those questions. Sure. So, that you, so yeah. participants can raise your hand. There is a virtual hand uh, in Teams. And then yeah. I can uh, prompt the speaker to give you so that no. you can ask your question. I will not be able to do uh, look at those hands and all, but yes, you can. That I can tell you. Yeah. When Great. Okay, uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sanjay Kumar, uh, and uh, thanks to Arvind for organizing all these uh, talks and other stuff. I have been into training uh, into telecom from last 20 years and into training from last 15 years. Train people in like 50 plus countries. Uh, uh, so training and telecom is something which I, you know, breathe and, uh, you know, day in and day out. This is uh, training and uh, interacting with people. I do a lot of open sessions. I, I keep on doing it. So this is uh, something which I'm doing from last 15 years. Today's topic is, you know, uh, primarily uh, focused around 5G uh, because 5G is uh, growing in a big way and in many ways uh, 5G is not similar to the previous generation of technologies like 1G to 4G. There are some major changes which has happened in 5G. We are going to talk about what are those changes and then what do we expect in uh, six years? Well, right. so what are the things uh, going to be forward way forward in 6G? During this discussion, we will also talk about something called as telco cloud. So most of us have either heard about cloud, have worked with the cloud, but what is this term uh, called as telco cloud? We will understand what and telco cloud is something which makes the 5G technology very different than the previous generation of networks. We will understand what were the things till 4G and what was transforming in the 5G case and that's some, what is telco cloud, right? We will discuss more about it. Now, what we are going to discuss in this particular session, uh, why another G? We already had enough of Gs, 1Gs, 2G, 3G, 4G. Now we are talking about 5G. Why do we really need that? What is the importance of 
uh, cloud, uh, right? So why cloud gets very important for uh, telecom world? What are the different type of jobs in telecom? Some kind of, you know, DevOps, DevOps, which was a very, very, you know, common uh, word for the IT world, but you rarely used to hear this in the telecom. But now you can't really imagine telecom without DevOps. So we'll understand why DevOps becomes critical for telecom as well. What are the different top tech trends, right? So, uh, you know, uh, like uh, there are a lot of uh, new technology trends which is coming in and uh, I will actually see how those trends will have some dependency on 5G, right? Why to learn 5G, how to learn 5G, we will talk about it. So is it just another, another G or some kind of disruption and what are the things we are going to see in 6G, right? So this is the brief agenda. Uh, I will be, you know, going through some slides at any point of time. If you have any question, please feel free to raise your hands and our Ravind will facilitate us to, you know, answer this question. Now, if you look at the evolution, uh, whenever I talk about, you know, 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, every time there is something which comes to our mind as an end user is the speed. But typically we call this as a data rate or data throughput. So with every generation, every generation, we have little higher data rate. So this direction, we are having our data rate by increasing. So in GPRS and GSM, we started with as low as 9.6 kbps. And now in 4G, we are getting up to 1 gbps kind of data rate. What 5G is going to bring here is, 5G is going to bring here is almost 20x kind of increase. So our data rate will be 20 times higher, but this is more of a marketing term because it comes with a lot of terms and condition. We will talk about some of them, right? That is one. Secondly, many people say, okay, you say 4G gives you 1 Gbps. 4G gives you 1 Gbps, but we never get 1 Gbps in our phone, right? We get somewhere around 10 Mbps or maybe maximum 20 Mbps, right? We need to understand that the numbers which are shown here, they are not the data rate for the end users. These are the numbers for the network peak data rate. Network peak data rate. This is like I have 100 rupees and if I want to distribute that 100 rupees into 100 people, I will give 1 rupee each may not be all the time. I give 10 rupees to someone, 1 rupee to someone, 50 pesa to someone, depending on their requirement, their capabilities. So the numbers which are mentioned here are not the data rate which are available for the user, but these are the data rates which are offered by the network, shared among all the users in that given coverage area. So this is called as network peak data rate. This is called as user experience data rate. This will also become almost 100 to 200 Mbps, almost 10x to 220x, even for the user experience. So if I really want to have these data rates, I can even download one high definition movie in say five seconds. That kind of data rates what I get. But now if we look at this closely, our data rates are increasing by 10x, 20x or whatever number. But do we really need that? Do we really need these data rates? So if you see most of the things, almost 95% of the things what we do, they are okay with 10 to 20 Mbps. They are okay with 10 to 20 Mbps kind of data rate. For those kind of things, we may not need 100 or 200 Mbps kind of data rate. Right. Secondly, if you see, when we talk about the last 15 years growth, the mobile networks has got have seen the exponential growth. The number of users, number of SIM card have grown exponentially between 2005 to 2020. But now this number is more or less saturated. Now, most of us have either got to mobile phones or got to SIM cards, right? Most of us have Sanjay and Sanjay Geo, Arvind and Arvind Geo, right? So we have either two phones or we have two SIM cards. Now, can we have 
exponential growth again in the number of connection if we introduce 5g here are we going to have instead of four two phones are we going to have four phones instead of two sims can we have four sim card and the answer is no so the number of users are more or less saturated for the mobile networks so where operators are going to see the next level of growth of course not the human beings so human beings are not the target for the telcos anymore human beings are not the target for the telcos anymore because that number is more or less saturated another important factor is called as arpu arpu average revenue per user let's take an example you are spending 2500 rupees for 12 months connection with jio so approximately you are paying around 200 rupees to jio every month so jio has a average revenue from you is 200 rupees per month tomorrow jio introduces 5g and they say hey because we are giving you 20x speed you should also pay us at least 10 times the money as a user will be okay with that answer is no again so again they have to increase it very very marginally or maybe bring it lower as well so i instead of 200 rupees i can say 220 rupees so this 10x speed doesn't give you 10 times of revenue so more or less the business from the human is dead for the operators not many operators not many users are going to spend extra get new sim cards just for 5g so now how operators will make money how telcos will make money and the answer lies in the iot or instead of say i to iot we say ioe internet of everything 5g is not only targeted for human beings 5g is targeted for everything you have to connect devices you have to connect streets you have to connect cities you have to connect transportation infrastructure and all the, anything else what you can think of so you can have a smart shirt you can have smart shoes smart racket or whatever and everything and anything can be connected to and that is the target of 5g so first thing here is 5g is not targeted only for the human beings 5g is targeted for so many other use cases which were not planned not targeted in the previous generation of network that is the one big difference compared to the previous generation of network the another big difference here is till 4g till 4g telecom was a proprietary world telecom was a proprietary world what does that mean every network you build whether it is 2g 3g 4g you will get a piece of hardware with a coupled software and you have to buy this from the same vendor same company so most of the telecom hardwares were purpose built hardware purpose built sort software and tightly integrated with each other so you cannot buy hardware and software from the different companies this was the scenario till 4g most of the times so you can't really get hardware and software from different vendors so every time you want to change software you have to get a new hardware every time you want to change hardware you have to get a new software right however going forward what they see is they say hardware and software should be disaggregated hardware and software should be disaggregated and they should be able to operator should be able to buy these things from different vendors so you can buy hardware from anyone software from anyone and they should have some you know open interfaces between them so that these hardware and software can communicate with each other not only that even from one device to another device when they want to communicate in telecom there used to be telecom specific protocol there used to be telecom specific protocol so every new device what you add in the network you need to have new protocols to be created new things to you know take care of that and because of that these networks were not scalable now what we are doing is in case of 5g 
not all of them but most of these telecom specific protocols are getting redundant and they are moving to open protocols like http so now these devices are going to communicate to each other in the language of http json some kind of you know as put methods get methods and other stuff so many things which were there till 4g tightly integrated hardware telecom specific protocols and all those things are getting scrapped and we are moving towards more open ecosystem and that is something which makes 5g very different and this also gives power to because once you have disaggregated software and hardware i need not to depend on the same vendor for buying hardware so i can deploy this hardware as a cloud both in a public cloud as well as private cloud so i can have this infrastructure built on my own private cloud my own data centers or i can even host this these application i can host these application even in a public cloud like aws or maybe gcp that is also so one of the operator in us called as dish wireless that was the fourth operator in us and they already had three big operators to fight with so instead of fighting with them they choose another path they have hosted their complete network infrastructure on amazon web services so they are deploying their workloads completely on aws so now it is we instead of talking about telecom networks we call them workloads in the language of the it world so after 5 years down the line we may not see a different uh, you know industry called telecom we may see this telecom merging completely into it world completely into the cloud infrastructure so that is possible 5 years down the line right now why another g why another 5g of course i have talked about some of these things the first requirement is data rate which goes from 1 gbps to 20 gbps connecting lot of things and also moving towards cloud and it infrastructure and believe me when i say this i'm not saying that it have changed everything only from 4g to 5g many of these things we have also tried and tested in previous generation so in case of 4g we have something called as 4.5g as well which gives you data rate somewhere around 3 gbps in 4g we had something called as nb iot and emtc which is more towards the devices we also had something called as virtual epc right so i'm not saying that we made this transformation in a drastic manner when we moved from 4g to 5g many of these things we have tried and tested in different forms even in 4g and then we have transformed toward 5g to make it to the whole new level right so higher data rate cloudified environments and now when we implement these network function as we will see we will implement all these network functions as vnfs and cnfs in the cloud environments virtualized network function and containerized network function earlier they used to be pnfs physical network function which comes with a hardware and a software so we are getting more into the virtualized and cloud native network function cloud native network function where all the application this software is further broken down into something called as microservices and those microservices are deployed on some kind of containers i'm not sure if you have heard about this word these are some things what we use in cloud networks virtual machines containers docker kubernetes and stuff like that so we are getting more into containerized environments cloud native network functions and stuff like that right why cloud becomes very critical for this because it is very difficult to so the biggest problem with the telecom network was scalability and economics of scale now let me recall one of the incident when i was working with bharti airtel 
not Bharti Airtel. I was working with Ericsson and managing network of Airtel. We were managing network of Airtel. We used to plan our capacities. We used to plan our capacity of the network for 31st December midnight 12 to 1. Right, so our capacity target used to be 31st December 12 to 1 midnight. That was the time of the year where previous year, I'll not say next year because next year we may see another growth. For the whole previous year, we used to have highest traffic at the midnight of 31st December. And we used to plan our capacity for this because it requires a lot of physical components. We used to start our planning in July itself. We used to start our planning in July itself because we have to order for hardware, we have to deploy the hardware, we have to integrate, test, commission. And finally, we used to get it up and running by 15th of December. On 15th of December, we used to wait for 31st December. There used to be a spike of traffic on 31st December. And after that, it goes down again because from 1st of January, you are your traffic is again going down. Right now, when you have added so much of hardware capacity after this time, it will be again unused. We used to waste a lot of processing power, lot of storage, lot of computing capacities because we did not have the scalability. However, now because of the cloud environment and because of economics of scale, you can scale your network. You can scale up, scale down. You can, you know, make it uh, increase the capacity whenever you need it. Whenever you don't need it, you can decrease the capacity. The extra capacity you can use for some other workloads instead of using it for telecom. But if you build the hardware, you have to, you know, restrict that capacity for telecom. And that is the prime reason because scalability, the way the telecom networks are increasing, the way the data rates are increasing, telecom requires massive network and deploying those massive network with physical assets are not going to be easy. And those workloads are, you know, variable. They are sometimes they're very high, sometimes they're very low. We have to use the capacities based on our requirement, but not the fixed capacity. And then we keep on wasting those capacity. That's where cloud becomes very important. So most of the network deployment which are happening today, they are happening on cloud environments. It can be some kind of private cloud, public cloud. It can be some kind of hybrid cloud. I'll not get into what is private, but private is when it is, you know, owned by one company public. It is when it is available for anyone like AWS, Azure and Google, right? And they also have some hybrid model where you use some capabilities in the private cloud and some capabilities in the public cloud as well, right? This also transforms the jobs in telecom. Earlier telecom jobs were mostly related to network operation center, related to, you know, some kind of planning, RF planning or co-network planning, some kind of field job. So these are the typical telecom jobs which were there because not lot many companies were into telecom in the direct, direct business. Mostly they were having indirect business with some other operators. Okay, any questions here? Okay, right. But because of the, you know, cloudification and softwareization of the telecom network, now you can get any type of job, any type of IT job, any type of telecom job in the telecom industry. Now there are more software, you know, software engineer requirements in the telecom than the NOC engineers or planning engineers. You need more software testers. You need more software developers. Right. You need more DevOps engineer. You need more cloud uh, solution architect in telecom than the people who need to know 2G, 3G, 4G. Right. So the jobs in telecom have trans transformed in a way. And there was a time India is a country which was always a manpower abundant country. Right. We never had lack of you know people, lack of manpower. But if you look at last two years or at least last one year, if companies are looking for 100 resources for some specific job role in telecom, they get 
less than five resources less than five resources so out of 100 resources if they want to hire they don't even get five to ten resources right this is the condition this is the, still the condition today right companies are struggling to hire do we don't we have the manpower we have the manpower but the problem is in the skills the people who have the telecom experience they don't have the cloud experience the people who have the cloud experience they don't have telecom experience so having them on the same uh, you know same page it is getting difficult and that's why companies are struggling to hire so what they are doing is they are hiring people from one domain and training them on another domain this is what they are doing so struggling almost every telecom company is struggling to hire people because there are a there is a huge skill gap in the skills which are available in the market and which are required in the future generation of network so jobs in telecom are transforming in big way and now almost everyone whether you are you know connected to other industry there are also some kind of opportunity so one of my friend who was a network head in airtel he recently changed his job and he got into hdfc bank as a network head so hdfc bank also has got a big network and they have hired a guy from airtel to head their network division so you don't think that if you are working in telecom or it you have jobs only in airtel and vodafone you also have you know lot of opportunities in the it companies and every other domain which we can think of right again earlier telecom networks were mostly running with monolithic software because they used to come from the same vendor same company so whatever they sell you have to buy you did not have any options however with the you know virtualization and later moving towards cloud native network function right the software has become bread and butter of telecom network and that brings another important aspect to the telecom world which is very you know popular in it world called as devops development and operations where you can't really wait for you know development to complete and then you know uh, get into operations so there is a you know life cycle which typically runs around it and this is a ever going process so this is not you know one time earlier if you want to make any changes in the software you used to wait for 12 to 24 months so there used to be change request there used to be you no know, some kind of change uh, cd uh, what we used to call it, change deliveries change deliveries so they used to have every 12 months every 6 months they used to have change deliveries nowadays you have the change delivery every 10 times in a month right so you keep on developing something keep on testing it deploying it keep on managing it and then finally giving the feedback and plan for the next delivery so this has become a continuous process even in telecom today because networks are more software control software based kind of network right now according to forbes according to forbes these are the top 10 technology trends that is going to transform our world in the next 5 years if you look at it ubiquitous computing connected smart everything the datafication of the world ai xr digital trust 3d printing gene editing and synthetic biology nanotechnology and material science new energy solution now you may ask hey you were talking about 5g you were saying 5g is very important but if you look at all these technology trends you don't see a mention of 5g anywhere right you don't see mention of 5g anywhere no don't see a mention of cloud as well but these all technology trends runs on two things first of all devices who are going to generate this data devices who are going to generate this data because all these things will require lot of data to work then the next step is connectivity connecting these devices to some centralized server and then analyze analysis analyzing the data analysis of data right now if you see this all these 
stack trends are highly dependent on the connectivity part. I'm not saying other things are not important. They are also important. And these are highly dependent on devices and the connectivity part. And these devices and connectivity, if you are doing it with some wires, it is not scalable. This can only go to the next level when it is all wireless because putting so many wires with so many devices, so many sensors, it is not going to work. So almost, if not all, almost all these technology trains will have heavy dependency on the devices front, which is typically either some sensors or some mobile phones or the connectivity, which is typically towards given by some kind of wireless network. When I say wireless, it may not be always 5G or 4G. It may be Wi-Fi sometimes and some other wireless technology, right? But it has to be wireless because we know with the wires, we, with the wires, we can't really scale our networks. We cannot have 1 million devices all connected with wires, but with wireless or with wireline, with wireless, yes, we can have it. So all the technology trends, what you see here, even though 5G is not mentioned there, but 5G is the main backbone on these, on which all these technology trends will prosper. Right. Just to uh, give you an, some numbers uh, as per some, why, why do we learn 5G, how to learn 5G in cloud? There are almost 1 million jobs available on 5G and related technologies. When I say this, your traditional job role, the traditional things what you were doing in the telecom world will not work here. You need to get ready with the new skills. India will need 22 million skilled people for 5G rollouts. But this is just the, just the tip of the iceberg because almost every global company, every global company is setting up their offices in India. Right. Uh, Bangalore, I'm just writing because uh, currently I'm in Bangalore, but they have big offices being set up recently. Rakuten India, for example, Rakuten is one of the operator of Japan, right? They have set it up one office next to Kaban Park in Bangalore, which is Rakuten India office, and they are planning to hire 1000 people in next six months. Right. So not only for Indian requirement, sitting people here in Bangalore, in Noida, in Pune, they are supporting global companies. Most of the companies have their even Google, AWS, Azure. They all have their engineering team sittings here in India, either in Bangalore or in Hyderabad or in Pune or some other place. Companies are struggling to hire people with these new skills. Most of the people who are the mid management level at the 15 years of experience, they are struggling to learn new technologies, new skills, and that is something companies are facing problem with. There is a huge skill industry gap in telecom, even for the experienced people. The growth of telecom industry is very fast at this point of time. And as per some estimate by economic times, this gives a 30 billion US US dollar opportunity for the IT companies in India, serving India as well as global customers. Right now, as I mentioned earlier, just an, an, another G or disruption, as I mentioned, 5G is not designed only for data rate, but yes, a vertical of it is related to data rate only, which is typically called as MBB earlier. MBB means mobile broadband, and now we call it as EMBB, enhanced mobile broadband. What does that mean? Enhanced mobile broadband means you are going to change your data rate from 10 Mbps going up to 100 Mbps, but it is in the traffic density, 10 Mbps per square meter kind of data rate, right? So typically network peak data rate is going from 1 to 20 Gbps. The user data rate is going from 10 to 100 Mbps. So your data rate is becoming 10x or 20x depending on the use cases. But there is another extreme vertical which is called as massive machine type communication, which is talking about massive connectivity. What does that, that mean? Massive connectivity, 1 million devices 
per square kilometer. One million devices per square kilometer. That means the technology should be able to support up to one million devices every square kilometer. One million devices every square kilometer. And the third one is ultra reliable and low latency communication. Ultra reliable means the network should be available for 99.999. Let's take an example of autonomous car or let's say self driving car. You can't really the way we lose, you know, uh, coverage in our phone. You can't, ex you know, can't expect to lose coverage for your autonomous car, right? And you cannot wait for 10 milliseconds or 20 milliseconds to take a decision. Your latency should be less than one millisecond. Your latency should be less than one millisecond. So that is what we are expecting in case of 5G network. So we call it as a URLLC, ultra reliable low latency communication. So these are the three service verticals which are defined. We have another service verticals defined called as V2X, vehicle to everything, but that's not all. There are a lot many use cases which will come somewhere between these things like on this axis, on this axis or on this axis. So every use case, every different service segment for 5G is different. There is no thumb rule to design your 5G network and to enable that, we have got some new concepts in 5G called as network slicing. We have got something called as multi access edge computing. We have got something called as orchestration and n number of other things. So these are some high level things which we are not getting into the details. So network slicing means having a physical network, having a single physical network, and divide it into slices, virtual logical layers, virtual logical layers, which can be independent from each other, which can be isolated from each other. So one slice gives services only for EMBB. Another slice gives services only for URLLC. Another slice gives coverage for MMTC. Another slice gives you know services for V2X and all these services, all their performance metrics, all their KPIs can be entirely different. They can have different kind of SLAs, different kind of KPIs, and they're completely isolated from each other. This is something which is possible by doing something called as STN or NFE. Software defined network or network function virtualization a software defined network or network function virtualization now what do we expect so 5g is yet to come in india 5g is yet to come in india so we have already started talking about 6g 6g research has already started 6g research has already started so what do we expect in 6g we will see in the next few slides so in 6g we are thinking of we already know this right starlink we one web one web is by airtel right so satellite internet satellite internet so there is already some initiative taken to provide seamless connectivity so all these networks what we are building they are called as terrestrial network because they are mostly built on the land infrastructure mostly built on the land right but there are a lot of satellite networks which are being built very many drone based network, unmanned aerial vehicle, UAV kind of network, many maritime networks. So the idea is to have a global coverage and seamless connectivity across the network. So you can get a SIM card for that. You can use a land network. You can use a Starlink network. You can use a maritime networks to have, you know, interconnectivity with all these networks. So one user will have a global coverage. One user will have a global coverage. He can access the services at any place in the world. There are a lot many spectrum. I'm not sure if you have, uh, you know, following the news about the spectrum. We recently had, you know, uh, 5G spectrum auction in India where major competitor was Airtel, Vodafone and Geo and the fourth one was Adani. But that was only one part of the story. We are trying to, you know, use all the different type of spectrum, which includes, you know, sub six gigahertz. This is some term what we use for the spectrum less than six gigahertz. Millimeter wave which is above 24 gigahertz 
terahertz level optical spectrum so we are trying to use n number of different technologies to you know converge with each other and provide the best consumer experience to the end users to achieve this we need to have a lot of radio network wireless network have lot of dependency on the spectrum we use lot of terms which i am not getting to the into the details called as band bandwidth modulation carrier channel and number of other stuff uh, multiple access technique duplexing techniques so a lot of stuff which is there on these terminologies which i am going to skip here but yes spectrum is a critical aspect spectrum is the critical aspect for all wireless network and that is something that is something which is going to be you know much more demanding in case of 6g or 5g kind of network so there are a lot of efforts are being made to you know combine the you know uh, kind of different kind of spectrum combining them and then giving the best user experience to the end user also because we are moving towards more open networks more open networks the security becomes a problem network security earlier it was all wired network very very telecom specific protocols but now we are moving into cloud environment http kind of protocols right so security becomes important so we need to put security efforts on physical layer on network layer on application layer or any other layer for that matter of course when you consume when you create when you you know have so much amount of data you need to have something called as ai ml big data data analytics deep learning so 6g network will be more less about human intervention more about artificial intelligence and machine learning in these kind of thing. of course all these things will have lot of dependency on each other getting generating more data storing the data processing data creating some actionable insight from that data that is going to be the power of 6g and 6g is not going to do it uh, you know just out of the way we are already started doing many of these things in 5g there are some specific network function for example nwdaf so in 5g there is a network function called as nwdf network data analytics function which specifically which specifically talks about data analytics so we have some special function taking care of these function even in 5g network but it is going to be you know way different in case of 6g and beyond networks right so uh, that that's all i have uh, if you want to you know get me connect, connected to me you can connect to me on linkedin i am pretty active on linkedin uh, with the name of sanjay kumar you search for sanjay kumar 5g you will get my name in the linkedin i also have a youtube channel from uh, learnizo global i have a community of around 2000 telecom professionals with the name of learn 5g on telegram right so if you wish to connect to on social media you can connect to me on all these uh, social media handles right so that's all i have i'm open for questions uh, arvind if you or anyone else have any questions we can take up the question before we conclude the session i hope i was able to do some justice to your time right uh, any questions feel free to ask those questions yeah yeah thanks sanjay so sanjay i have one question just uh, one at a time uh, let amrit ask first then we yeah. can go to shantanu yeah please go ahead yeah so only the satellite uh, 6g only four use cases or more use cases are there oh, no no sorry say again uh, can you repeat your question in 6g yeah, yeah in 6g right? yeah. only satellite or marital only no, no, that, 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 if you see, see that was only one of the things what we are aspiring to do in 6g right so it's not about creating a new satellite network creating a new maritime network those networks are already existent they are already existing the idea is to convert let, let me give an example if you look at uh, maybe 10 15 years back if you look at 10 15 years back we used to have tv for movies we used to yeah. have you know, uh, uh, telephone connection we used to have telephone connection for voice calls and we used to have computers for internet do we have all these three different type of network today yes or no they all convert no. to one network right now we are getting tv service telephone service and internet service from the same device from the same network just like that today also we have terrestrial network today also we have 
satellite network. Today also we have maritime network. The idea is to convert these network in the future generation. So it's not about building a new satellite network, but converging. Of course, we need to make some changes in the existing network to make it, uh, you know, con uh, easy to converge into other networks. But idea is to have convergence. Uh, Amrit, does that answer your question? Convert, but uh, what exactly coming in CC? Sorry, sorry, say again. What exactly coming in CC? Come, uh, no, I, I'm not getting your question. Come, what exactly? It means new feature coming in CC. Convergence, uh, you can uh, add more, uh, more bandwidth, more channel, more uh, this one. So type what than... does that convergence mean? What does that convergence mean? Convergence means, right, if you see today, you get a SIM card. Right. From the same SIM card, you are getting multiple services from the same network. That doesn't mean your SIM have the capability. You just have the subscription, right? You just have the subscription. The idea is to, you know, combine all these networks so that they talk to each other and provide all the services to this user. Exactly in the same manner, when you get a 6G SIM card, just to take an example, when you get a 6G SIM card, you will get a SIM card only one SIM card, but with that SIM card, you will be able to connect to terrestrial network. You will be able to connect to satellite network. You will be able to connect to maritime network. So it is about giving you services from multiple networks with a single subscription. And that is where we consider all these networks are conversed with each other and they are communicating with each other. Uh, does that give some clarification, Amrit? Yeah, some part, but um, in, in 5G, what uh, in the core, what are the new changes in 5G in the core? So it's, it's completely new network architecture. We have got all the new network function. They are all based on VNFs and CNFs. They are all, you know, communicating with, the, with each other in the HTTP. So there are a lot of changes. It will be difficult to summarize uh, those things with one statement, right? So these are some of the high level changes what I'm talking about. Every protocol message is different. Now they are using, instead of using uh, protocols like uh, diameter, they are using uh, protocols like uh, HTTP. On top of that, they are using JSON schema and stuff like that. Actually, here uh, we have an uh, older talk by Sanjay. It's yeah. on our YouTube channel. So that gives uh, that talk is about 5G core. Yes, yes. That is like, a one hour that, talk that gives you a lot of details about 5G core. So you can look it up. Uh, thanks, thanks, Amrit. Uh, thanks. Uh, next, okay. we can have a question from Shantanu. After that, Sandeep. Yeah, Shantanu, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, Sanjay. So, uh, my question is here yeah, regarding satellite communications. So, mm -hmm. you said uh, coming 6G when we depend on satellite communication, and uh, let's say I worked on Ku band in 4G, that time having some latency 400 to 600 millisecond. Okay, so yeah. that time we had issue to integrate our gene, uh, our e node B and testing within defense environment. So how 6G because 5G also in nanosecond some latency and uh, go, going forward 6G also coming to some uh -huh, lower latency. So how we are going to take in these things? Right, uh, no problem. Let me answer this. Shantan, if you see, uh, do you have any idea how much latency we had in GPRS? Any idea about that? More it was somewhere around 450 milliseconds. Yeah, yeah. Right. In 4G, we have come down to almost 10 milliseconds. In 5G, we are expecting around 1 millisecond. Now, what I'm trying to convey here is if you see, we have come long way even in the terrestrial networks, even in the terrestrial networks, right? From a 450 to 500 millisecond kind of latency to 1 millisecond kind of latencies. Is this the same thing happening with satellite networks also? Yes, for sure. We are having these advanced technologies, advanced features, which can reduce these latencies drastically. That is one. Secondly, if you are getting a latency of let's say one millisecond from a satellite network, uh, sorry, from a terrestrial network, can you get exactly the same type of latency from satellite network? Answer is no. If all other features are same, Right, all other features are same. You cannot have the same level of latency from the satellite network. Satellite network is less about latencies. It is more about NFA. 
where would you go if you don't have any other feasibility it is called as non feasibility areas so in a city like delhi in city like bangalore city like mumbai where you have intense intense uh, kind of uh, terrestrial network would you prefer to go with these satellite network will always have limitation in terms of coverage in terms of capacity in terms of latencies but do you get some services the answer is yes so satellite networks were primarily not designed for regular services they were designed for services where you don't have any other feasibility you remember uh, we uh, we had something called as you know even in the aircrafts you can use your mobile phones right so what i used to do i used to put my base station in the aircraft and bsc on the ground bsc on the ground so this is my bts this is my bsc which is base station controller and i used to typically when they talk to each other they used to talk to each other they have a latency of let's say 10 milliseconds i'm just taking an example here this is not the exact number right when they were both on the ground when initially they were both on the ground they will have a latency of 10 millisecond if you get a response after 10 millisecond bts or bsc will reject that particular communication but when we used to connect them via satellite i used to you know give them a parameter both at both the ends even at bsc even at bts saying that hey this interface is based on satellite so instead of 10 millisecond expect a 100 millisecond kind of delay right so what i'm trying to convey here is are there some limitation with latencies and all with satellite yes there are so both the parties has to understood that yes this link this communication is coming via satellite there may be less coverage there will be less capacity less latency so you have to be okay with this you can't change the basic behavior of radio waves right so you can't really compare you know apple to apple you have to consider them different you can't really say even the satellite network should give me 1 millisecond kind of delay latencies it may or may not happen right but yes is there improvement for sure sometimes we used to get you know couple of seconds kind of you take an example i'm not sure if you used it but if you were using skype back in 2007 and if you use skype or whatsapp today do you feel a difference it is completely different at that time when i was using skype in 2007 there was a delay of 1 to 5 seconds i'm saying not milliseconds 1 to 5 seconds so i used to speak wait for 2 seconds that then allow other person to speak listen to him and then i speak now it is your whatsapp and skype call as good as your mobile call almost no latency almost you know no observed latency kind of stuff so we have come a long way and that is going to happen with satellite also i hope shantanu that answers your question any follow up question with that yeah thank you uh, no questions okay sandeep uh, go ahead with your question uh hi jay i just yes. want to anybody wants to start um, studying or uh, something like uh, he wants to start a career in 5g mm-hmm. should he know uh the details about 3g and 4g are they must can start because it looks for me like it's a completely new technology from the other if they know 3g or 5g or if they don't know 3g or 5g people who don't know 3g and 4g okay. at all okay okay right so, so if you see this is a little tricky question because you know these telecom networks are not revolutions they are evolutions so if i start comparing if i start comparing there are many things in 5g which are still similar or equivalent to 2g or 3g kind of network so we have not got into the details of evolution of the network how we moved from 2g to 3g 3g to 4g 4g to 5g right so uh, 5g is not a completely new rocket science or new invention it is just evolution which is happening we are learning from our mistakes and then moving to the next level right so if you talk about technology wise uh, i'll say no it will not be easy for someone just to get started with 5g that is first part of my answer but the second part of my answer will be different what i'll say is hey 5g is not only about wireless networks 
5G has lot of intervention on the cloud, have lot of intervention on uh, technologies like AI, ML, lot of intervention on the cloud native, right? Of course, there are software development. Today, even in telecom, people are saying that we are working in 5G, but what they are doing is they are doing development in C, C++, Golang, Python. So depending on from what background you're coming in, right? So some of the job roles may not be suitable for you. Some of the job roles may be suitable for you, right? So it all depends what is your background. So if you're saying you are just, you know nothing, then it is always good, right? You can learn anything, right? But if you are coming with some baggage, either from C, C++, Golang or Python, you have opportunity in 5G. If you're coming from 2G, 3G network, you have opportunity in 5G. So it all depends from where you are starting and where you want to you know, go. According to that, I'll say yes or no. So if you talk about only from wireless network perspective, answer is no. But if you talk about, uh, you know, other perspective, what are the new opportunity in 5G? The answer is yes. You have the lot of options available in the telecom world, in the 5G world. Uh, does that give some clarity, Sandeep? Any follow up question with that? Yeah, yeah. I, it, Can you give a little background uh, from which kind of experience, uh, background you come with? And, and I think that will help me to answer this question in a little better way. Yeah, I come from Linux uh, background, means it, I'm an admin. It, okay. Right. So if you see Linux is something which is one of the most powerful thing in the world today. Right. So uh, recently we did a training uh, for one of the company where we had uh, done uh, five days of telecom, five days of C, C++, five days of Linux training. So there are a lot of opportunity for Linux people. Of course, you need to get an overview of 5G, uh, what 5G is, what 2G is, what 3G is. And that is, you know, for that also, you should not get into a detailed course. You should start looking for some easy videos on YouTube, then start reading. Uh, just go and uh, Google for 5G for dummies. So it is just a book. People, what people, a mistake people make, right? So simply they go to a reference book which is having 500 pages so they open first second page and then they get this art and saying that I, i'll not be able to understand this so instead of that start for start with some books which are for dummies dummies means uh, it is very very basic level so 5g for dummies is a book with, with just 40 pages it is a small novel you can finish it in two days you will understand what 5g is then move to the next book next document next uh, links right so you should go slowly and try to learn these things from basic and then move to the next level i hope that makes some sense uh, sandeep yes 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 uh, arvind do we have any more questions yeah two uh, two more rajat and bhagya lakshmi so uh, yeah. rajat go ahead first uh, yeah Hello, uh, just hold on, Nagindra. First, let Rajat ask. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Sanjay, for the uh, this discussion. And uh, so, my question is: uh, So, I come from uh, 4G, 5G background, uh, test engineer. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how can I move towards uh, cloud, Docker, Kubernetes, and then eventually AI. Nice. Because, uh, yeah. And yeah, another question. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll please. just say. Yeah, please. Go and another question is, uh, uh, how do you think uh, 5G will uh, increase the this uh, improve the voice quality? Because we always talk about in 5G that uh, data rate improves OTT and different types of use cases, but we never talk about the voice quality because in 4G also we have issues. Mm -hmm. That's it. These okay. Two. Right. So let me answer one by one. So if you see, if you are coming up with 4G kind of experience. Moving to 5G should not be a problem for you. Of course, you have to top up this 5G knowledge with cloud, with IT kind of terminology, with DevOps kind of terminology. So you need to put some additional effort to learn these things. So Docker, Kubernetes and also there is a no uh, shortcut to learn these things. You have to get started with the, I, I'll give the same answer what I give to Sh Sandeep. So you have to start with some basic, look at some videos, what cloud is, what Docker it was. So instead of, you know, so in the first shot, getting into the detailed course or detailed documents of those things, try to learn some basic documents, uh, basic understanding, and then build it from there. So that will be the first way of doing it. About voice quality, right? So, you know, whatever we, when we moved from 3G to 4G, 3G to 4G, we have seen a major shift in the voice quality. And what was the reason for that? The reason for that was, from CS, 
to PS. Voice has moved over IP packets. It was circuit switching in 3G, in 2G, in 4G, we have started moving towards packet switching. So we had something called as VOLTE. Yes. Voice over LTE. And the quality of voice over LTE cannot be same as circuit switching. Cannot be same as circuit switching because circuit switching gives you a circuit just for your voice packet, voice bits, but VOIP or VOLTE doesn't do it. Will there be a change in the quality? The answer is yes. There will be a difference in the quality when we move from 3G to 4G, mostly because now you're move, carrying your voice packets over IP. Now, how you can make it better? How you can make this experience better? And the answer for that is quality of service. QOS, quality of service, is how you are going to treat these packets, how you are going to treat these packets, how you are going to give priority to these packets, and that will define your quality, voice quality in general. Right, voice quality in general. So we started with 4G somewhere around 2012, 2013. Today we are sitting in 2022. Today we are sitting in 2022 and <clears throat> sorry, today we are sitting in 2022. Do you see a difference in the voice? What you were seeing in the early or let's forget, forget about 2022. You started using Geo in 2017 and today you are in 2022. Do you see a difference in voice quality? The answer is a yes. We have seen a drastic difference. So the voice what you see here in 2010 is evolving from the days of 90s right so you have to give some time the time what you give to the voice from 1990s to 2010 you need to give some time to voice over ip also to get that maturity however in 5g we take it to the next level instead of volt we call it as a vo 5g and one of the type of vo 5g is called as vonr so it is not about, okay, if you want to compare CS circuit switching voice call VO5G, on the day one, it will not be equivalent. They will be different, right? But as the time progresses, as we get more mature, we get better quality of service, better performance management in the networks. Of course, it is going to give you acceptable quality. So it is all about evolution, nothing about, you know, doing something from scratch and from the day one, you get the best out of it. It is improving, it will improve. And on one fine day, we will get accustomed to it. The network will improve and we will forget, you know, the CS was good. We know VO5G is the only option what we have got and that is acceptable. That is good. Uh, does that answer your question? Uh, any follow-up question? Uh, thank you so much. No other questions. Yeah. Okay, next up is Bhagya Lakshmi. Go ahead. Hey, Bhagya Lakshmi, uh, please ask your question. Yeah, hi. Good morning, all. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. This time I want to uh, ask regarding the uh, 5G versus 6G in terms of uh, development and research. Mm -hmm. Because most of the thing in LT, L, while compared to LT and 5G, most of the changes has happened on the physical layer side. While well, mm -hmm. coming to the research, I am talking because mm -hmm. uh, EMBB and uh, MMTC and URLCC, whatever the features is implemented on the 5G, which are not mm -hmm. available on the 4G. These are all related to the uh, physical layer feature wise. So mm -hmm. in that way, so how mm -hmm. 5G is, uh, is varying changes from uh, 5G to 6G? Like what okay. are the main uh, network wise, uh, what are the layers are affecting and how the research mm -hmm. will be like? Just I want to know. Uh, so Bhagirakshmi, first let me uh, you know, come uh, just clarify one doubt here. Right. So first of all, if you think that all these services, what we are thinking of in 5G are impacting only the physical layer, that assumption is wrong to support many of these services. We the, if you see, let's take an example of network slice, right? Slice cannot work only with the physical layer. This has to be. So end that to it end. Only physical layer. No, no, I didn't. I'm not saying that because whatever I have seen on the physical layer, this time telling I'm not saying only the ha changes has happened on the physical layer side only. So whatever it is happening, your main uh, your features, whatever it has implemented. So the parts is just I'm telling that it's not it doesn't mean it it is only happened on the physical layer in the similarly just I want to know while com while coming to the 6G what are the network layers will be impact and in a which way that's it okay 
so that is you know little too early to you know um, um, i think i'm not the right guy to talk about you know what are the changes they're going to make in 6g even at the physical layer there's they, there were a lot of changes in the 4g to 5g but that doesn't mean the changes happen only on the physical layer yes there were changes the multiple access technique how you know uh, again uh, what do you uh, uh, you know thinking of when you say physical layer for me uh, i'll say changing hap changes happening on the resource block in the resource allocation and stuff like that of course those kind of changes will happen between 5g and 6g as well but uh, i will not be competent enough to talk about the physical layer of 6g so for me uh, i think uh, i am not the right guy to answer this question right away for this if you specifically want to talk about 5g to 6g kind of transformation and i don't think uh, you have enough data references or documents to talk about the physical layer of 6g for that matter okay no issue yeah yeah, yeah thanks so follow up to that uh, with, uh, what is the maturity of 6g like it's just started or so as of ideating yeah release 15 uh, was the first release in 2017 for 5g we already have release 16 introduced release 17 some of the work items are already you know freezed so we are today we are sitting at release 17 in most of the documents so it is all termed as 5g it is all termed as 5g the release 18 which is planned as 5g advanced 5g advanced so release 16 is still in the study phase uh, sorry not release 16 6g is still in the study phase and they have not even defined any releases for that so they are targeting somewhere between 2027 to 2030 that is what i have read somewhere but i'm not sure about the exact data so they have not even defined which release will correspond to your 6g and which year it will come so there are no data which I have come across. I'll not say there is no data, but I have not come across any data which can actually give you the timeline and the releases for 6G. Uh, does yeah. that answer your question? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So release uh, 18 is already, uh, introduced and uh, that is branded as 5G advanced. They have got a new logo around two months back for 5G advanced. Just okay. like LT2 so 5G, we have 5G advanced. Nagendra, you had a question earlier. Yeah, I, because you said uh, telco cloud, I was expecting uh, if there are any specific services which gets exposed, like, you know, uh, like the cloud services give their own AI services, you know, or, you know, I have a way to communicate using SMS, MMS, or, you know, something like that. Yeah, they are all maybe there, but I was thinking if there are any special services which gets open to the developers and then end user. Okay, so uh, Nagindra, if you see, they have kept it very simple. They say any network function wants to talk to any other network function. They don't really define, they have defined these, you know, uh, producer and they are defined as a consumer. So consumer can access any of the service of the producer. They typically define multiple services. So this has got multiple, this NF has got multiple service, service A, service B, service C, service D. And they can request for any of these services and all this communication is happening in the RESTful API architecture. And they are all using protocols like HTTP. On that, they have written all the data in the JSON schema. So typically they send a get request, put request, and then they get, you know, some of this information in the reply. So HTTP 200, HTTP 300, these kind of codes they use. So this is the typical with all the network functions communicate with each other. However, they have created another network function called as NEF, network exposure function, which can even expose these, some of these services, not in the controlled environments, they can even expose some of these services to the third party, but that is going to be detailed discussion. We need to know each and every network function to you know understand this. Yes, there are ways to expose these network functions and their services to internal networks, internal network functions, as well as the external world. There are some possibilities. And is the standards defining any of those minimal services or you know? Yes, yes. Uh, you, you should uh, just go to 
uh, 23 technical specification 23.502 go to the page number 285 you will get all the details of all nfs and all their services technical spec this is available on 3 gpp website go to 23.502 go to somewhere around page number 28 this page number can be slightly here and there because they keep on uh, getting new documents but uh, uh, all the nfs and their services are being defined there thank you so much uh arvind uh, i think that's uh, good to go now now we will wrap yeah. up this yeah so thank you so much sanjay for uh, taking your sunday morning off and uh, yeah. giving such a wonderful session thanks thanks and it was uh, presented in such a way that even not telecom people would be able to follow most of the content yeah and you cut through the uh, difficult technical jargon and explained it in a very easy to understand manner Yeah, thanks. Thanks. So that was very nice, and uh, I think we are much appreciated by the audience as as well. If I can speak on their behalf. Mm-hmm.